Welcome, everyone. Normally, um, we would have uh, Larry Wentz come up and give a, uh, a speech on the Kimball Morrison um, funds and the history and whatnot, but he decided to retire uh, last year and leave us in the lurch. Uh, so we put uh, together a video. There are three people who make tonight's award ceremony possible. And there's a unique life story to tell about Vincent Cooper, John Morrison, and Eunice Morrison. And I'll try to touch upon that. John Morrison was born in Stoneham, Mass., graduated from high school there, and attended the University of Vermont. He came of age during the Great Depression, so it's probable that he did not have the financial resources to complete his undergraduate studies. However, that did not deter him, and he learned the skills of a carpenter at a large construction company and soon demonstrated the ability to move up to production management. Those talents were utilized during military service in World War II, and following discharge, Morrison went to work again with the Bowen Construction Company in the Boston area. He worked his way up the corporate ladder to eventually become a principal in field operations. At his retirement in the 1970s, he purchased the orchard located on Nagog Hill Road in Littleton, fulfilling an interest in agriculture. He was an outdoorsman and liked to travel with friends. And to interject a few other phrases about him, he was also a very unique character who could be a little cudgelly at times. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Little is known of Eunice Morrison's life story. <clears throat> she was John's second wife and lived and worked at the orchard with him. Eunice was a frequent patron of the Reuben Hoare Library and was a benefactor for numerous library functions. She is most noted for her tireless efforts to ensure that the orchard be preserved as town-owned property with conservation restrictions. The site on Nagog Hill Road is the last operating orchard in town. Vincent Cooper was born, raised, and lived on the family homestead located on Great Road. He was a salutatorian of his high school class in 1934 and went on to earn an undergraduate degree at what is now UMass Amherst and eventually a graduate degree in etymology and geology at Virginia Tech. He was, in every sense of the word, a man of the soil. In addition to working the homestead, he continued to develop his craft in Georgia and Florida during numerous winters. Cooper was awarded several patents for his efforts in farming techniques and developing insect-resistant plants. There are a number of ways the Morrisons and Cooper can be connected to each other, and one common thread is civic activity. They were active participants in the life of the Littleton community. Support of the public library was also important to Vincent, and that support was recognized with a, the naming of a room in his honor. John served on several town government boards, and all three could be found in attendance at town meetings. A key word throughout these life stories is opportunity, and how these individuals recognized it and made use of it. Morrison was proactive and turned his, his departure from the University of Vermont into a successful lifelong career in construction. When an uncle, F.M. Kimball, provided the necessary funds, <clears throat> Cooper was able to complete his undergraduate studies and subsequently used that opportunity to forge a successful career in agriculture. The accumulated family wealth at her disposal provided Eunice financial security and thus the opportunity to ensure the conservation rather than the sale of the orchard. To paraphrase some comments made about Cooper, he lived a relatively quiet, simple life, so he could give his money away. Cooper's perspective about wealth is evident in his comment, not too shabby for a farmer, during discussions regarding the drafts of his trust documents. Opportunity presents itself in a variety of ways. It can be glaringly obvious or cleverly disguised. It can appear and be gone in an instant. It can have an impact over years and generations. The F.M. Kimball Second Scholarship was created by Vincent Cooper to honor and duplicate the opportunity provided to him. The Morrison Scholarship was created to make available educational opportunity that John Morrison did not have. The life stories written by John and Eunice Morrison and Vincent Cooper can be summarized by a quest for excellence, 
a thirst for knowledge, lifelong learning, and giving back to the community. Uh, and this year, it was over $110,000 in total uh, that the trust funds were able to uh, put together. And I think what we're seeing here in no small part is uh, partially due to Larry's uh, hard work over the years. Um, and I know he's uh, really been a mentor for all of us. Uh, I'm now the old timer on the group in many ways, but uh, you know, I'm in my sixth year, which pales in comparison to Larry's over 20. Uh, so the uh, scholarship committee felt it would be fitting to uh, have Larry come in and uh, be the keynote speaker tonight for a couple of reasons. One, for you to hear his perspective on the history and uh, how things, how he feels things have changed over the years, uh, as well as recognizing Larry for his uh, long service uh, in supporting the town, volunteering for the town, and uh, most of all, supporting the kids of the town. So with that, Larry Wentz. It doesn't mean it's shorter. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you for the kind words. I didn't recognize anything that was going on up there. Um, it, it's funny that, that Fred does the introduction because, as we know, on, when you get a cell phone message, an email, that it's an abbreviated message on the phone. And when I first saw that, I'm thinking, oh, Fred, nice. Yeah, sure, I'd love to come in and talk to everyone. Well, then I look at the email in its entirety and I see, oh, we're gonna take care of the historical stuff. You get to talk about something else. <laughs> and you uh, what did I get myself into this time around? Um, but thank you for the kind words and um, it's been a pleasure working with everyone over the years. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with that. The most part, best, best part of all this is that Working with the selection committee, working with the commissioners, it's always a great time giving away someone else's money. <laughs> you know, that, that's the best part of it. I'm going to throw at everyone um, some key words that will come at you. Uh, maybe individually you might think it's directed at you personally, uh, but I'm trying to think of this globally and how this all comes together uh, for an evening like tonight. Um, first word is connect. And Fred had mentioned, um, we saw in, in the video that uh, Vincent Cooper uh, made the initial donation, the contribution to start up a scholarship in his, his uncle's memory. Um, according to the first three selection committee members, um, they were charged with putting together everything about the operation of, of the scholarship. They had to come up with a timeline. They had to come up with an application form. They had to come up with whatever policies and procedures, all that, that paper stuff that has to happen. And as part of that, they included the interview. And my take on that is similar to what Brad Miller mentioned. Vincent Cooper, as the donor, yes, here's the guy who is providing the money, sat in on those first couple of years with the interviews. Now, try to put yourself in those kids' shoes. That's just like, oh, here's this guy over here, and uh, what's going on? How do I react to him? Because if you heard any of the stories about Mr. Cooper, there's one thing that really stood out about him is that he didn't like to wear shoes. And sure enough, at these interviews, he was shoeless. <laughs> and he's a farmer, so he <laughs> came across like a farmer. And he, but the important thing with that is he wanted to connect with the people who applied for a scholarship. 
He wanted to have that interpersonal connection. He wanted to see them firsthand. He wanted them to see who he was. Now, as, as mentioned, the scholarship awards were very modest in the beginning. Uh, the number of applications, modest as well. So when we talk about interviewing all of the applications, they probably weren't much more than a dozen, maybe 15 or 20. Um, when I came along, there were close to two dozen applications. So word was getting out. The commissioners were doing their job of marketing. Uh, people were aware of, of the scholarship. Um, so there was an, a nice interest in the, in the F.M. Kimball Scholarship. It was moving along, and then all of a sudden, it's just like, ooh, we have some issues with, with the application form because it was really old school. I mean, for, for young, younger folks, we're talking old school paper and pencil. You know, no word processing stuff. This was like handwrite, fill out the application form. And people had to go to the treasurer's office, get a copy of the application form, or go to the library to get an application, or to the guidance office at the high school. Well, we know what, what that leads to. Human nature, next word of the night, procrastination. Procrastination. How, how many of you have been through, did you pick up that application form? I'll get it, I'll stop by, I'll get it. Did you fill it out yet? It's, it's due in a couple of weeks. Oh, I've got more important things. I've got a test coming up. I've got a lab report to do. Did you drop it off? Oh, they were closed. What do you mean they were closed? It's a town hall. They were closed when I got there. Procrastination. For some people, it is an art. For some people, they really know how to use it. Well, part of what the selection committee, along with the commissioners, did now two, two cycles ago was to take a look at this application form. It, it needs to be updated. It was already updated once, but it needs to be updated again. Well, technology has given us some nice advances. We have Google Documents. I don't have a clue as to how they work. I really don't. Well, our experts can kind of say, oh, we can do this, we can put a timestamp on this, we can, makes it real easy, it's user friendly on both ends for people submitting, people reading. Great, let's go for it. The procrastinators loved it. They absolutely loved it. Here we are the first year, we're like three weeks out and there's maybe 20 applications have come in. Uh, did we miss something? Are we doing something wrong? Um, well, we checked with the people in the know. People in the know being some teachers, some guidance counselors, some administrators. The reply to, to our concern was a line from Bob Marley. Don't worry, be happy. Sure enough, 10 days out, the applications start coming in. Then there's a flood. And now we're at 50, 60, 70 applications. Top dog procrastinator. The Google Doc shuts down at 11.59.59. 11.59.59. What was it? 11.59? Thir yeah, it was like thir 13, 14. It was, there's, there's something magical about that <laughs> click. But the, the, the idea with that is we're trying to make it easy for people to apply, trying to make it easy to look at globally each application and then move on to make some decisions.
I got to find page three now. I said I only have four, so it's not bad. Vincent Cooper lived his almost entire life on Great Road, his homestead. Homestead is the next key word. Until this space became available in this library, the selection committee never really had a homestead. The interviews were scattered wherever space was available. If you're all, at all familiar with how town government works, how committees work, there are meetings scheduled all the time, and there's limited meeting space. Well, the selection committee held interviews in a six by six cubicle in the original library, which was the listening room. If you're ever familiar, the listening room was designed to be the space where you could take a cassette or an LP and listen to it over in the corner in the stacks where no one goes. So again, picture your interview in a cubicle with three or four adults, one on three, one on four. Well, the step up from that happened to be a conference room in the town hall. Beautiful. We got this space all to ourselves. We're up on the, was it 308? Third floor. No one's around. Easy to get to. Interviews are scheduled. Selection committee is on hand 15, 20 minutes ahead of time. Okay, here's some changes. We got, we, yeah, this is our agenda. This is when it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're all set, ready to go. Five minutes to go. There's no one there. It's now time to start the first interview. And we know 15 minutes goes pretty quickly, and it's hard to really make progress and to not have a long night if things go longer than 15 minutes. 10 minutes, and there's no one there. Um, I think, Fred, that was one of your first years. Uh, there's something wrong here, Fred. Uh, Pulled out the application form, got the cell number, made the phone call. Here's a frantic young lady outside the main entrance to the town hall, banging on the door. It's locked. Whoever was the last person out, the last town, townie, locked the door. Good first impression with the selection committee. Really good. Really good. Cooper room in the library, historical space down in the lower level. Again, out of the way, the stacks where no one goes unless they have to do some research. Filled with all this historical information. Piled up on the table. Okay, we're gonna meet down there. Well, the whole wall is, is glass. So it's not exactly a real kind of confidential area even though there's a door that's somewhat soundproof. Interviews are going along very nicely. We're not quite on schedule. Running a few minutes late, a few minutes late, a few minutes late. Five minutes of eight. Librarian comes down. We're closing in five minutes. You've got to leave. We're in the middle of an interview. You have to leave in five minutes. The lights are going off. An another wonderful event. This space is perfect. This space is perfect. We, we, we know all the ropes now about making sure people know how to get here. We know how to open and close the doors. Eh, still a little sketchy about the sound in the video, but we're working on that, right, Kirby? <laughs> but anyway, it's nice to have a place where we can gather the people who are receiving the scholarships, a place that the connection can be made that we can proceed with, with making the awards. But before that can happen, these interviews occur. And 
the impression that we get from an interview is critical. Yeah, but not that critical. Yeah, some of it is. I'm sure moms and dads did some coaching. This might be the first interview you've had, the first time you're sitting in front of people. Oh, I see a few chuckles. This is what you, this is how you have to handle yourself. This is how you present yourself. This is what you do. Uh, you don't know what the questions are gonna be. You don't know, but this is how you best present yourself. Those impressions um, can be lasting, but they're not permanent as far as the selection committee is concerned. But it's that first impression really sets the tone for how the rest of the interview is going to go. Some examples of that. I don't know, the handshake's still in, kind of, that's our fist bumps or, years ago, handshake. Cold, clammy hand, hot, sweaty hand. Hi, my name is, we know who you are. We're making eye contact. Nice to meet you, here's my resume. You're late. Um, I just got back from the beach. Okay. Beach casual, business casual. Shirt and tie, cutoffs and a t-shirt. We've seen pretty much everything. Aaron, body art, covered up completely, almost. Uh, I'm glad you got dressed for tonight's uh, interview. First impression. Well, we had first impressions about the selection committee. Now we got first impressions going with the, with the interviews. But the, the act of, and here's the next word, deciding. The act of deciding that the selection committee makes has so many different facets to it. There are so many things that they take into consideration that that first impression, the, the GPA, the whatever, the whatever, they're all part of that total picture of who you are. And what they're looking for in the interview is, how can I connect with you? How can you sell yourself to me? What makes you a little different? Stephen's keyword, differentiation. I finally figured out how to say that. Differentiation. I don't know if he used it during interviews this year. Well, he did, okay. How do you present yourself? How do you make yourself a little bit different, a little bit maybe better, so you can set yourself up to be in a position for an award? One item that is a factor because of Vincent Cooper and John Morrison is that volunteerism, is that act of volunteering. Uh, Aaron, way back when, those ancient days when you were in high school, was way back when, I, way back when, was, was your graduating class one of the first with community service? Oh man, come on. Come on, light up that brain cell. Yeah, probably one of the first ones that were actually doing that. Mm -hmm. That whole idea with community service is to give back to the community, to experience giving up something of yourself to others. Sharing some of the most valuable commodity that you have, and that's your time giving yourself to someone else, not expecting to get back anything, but you always do. It's that volunteer aspect that comes up in the interview. We see it, or we, it's seen in the applications with the write-up that may come in 
and you can see the interest, the passion in whatever it happens to be. And that's the type of thing, that's that character building, that's that issue that helps to sell yourself. I'm on to page four now. Volunteerism takes on a variety of forms. The video earlier, I touched on that already. That was, what, two years ago? Three years ago? Touched on that already. Volunteering is just one little thread that can be a connector. Carol King in her popular song, Tapestry, my life has been a tapestry. You're creating your own tapestry right now. And the volunteering that you've done as community service in high school, if you're on a college campus, maybe in a social club, maybe in something that you've linked with on campus, is a way to continue that spirit of volunteering that Cooper and Morrison have started and have promoted with their scholarships. So why, why do we want to volunteer? What, what's that all about? Littleton is a town located in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The official language, all the official, whatever, the legal stuff about the state, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It's not the state. Commonwealth, common good. That's my take on it. The volunteering is for the common good. It's for you giving to someone, to something, and then you get something back. The best thing you can do is to continue that, honor that legacy of the Morrisons and, and Cooper. Continue with that spirit of volunteering. Continue weaving that tapestry of your life and giving back at some point in time will happen. The opportunity will arise and you may miss it or you may embrace it. Here, and I'm not picking on you. It's all right. See, I know him. He graduated from high school with my daughter, so I, you know, I know him. Now, 20 plus years ago, when, when he was a graduated senior, if someone went up to him, yeah. <laughs> if someone had gone up to him and said, you know, someday, you're going to be volunteering and giving up all this time. You're going to be sitting on some committee with a bunch of old folks <laughs> giving away older folks' money. And my guess is he would have said, what planet did you just come from? <laughs> he would not have thought that was possible. Congratulations on receiving your award. Good fortune and success in your endeavors, wherever your life journey takes you. Congratulations again. Thank you, Larry. I knew he couldn't do it on two cards. Um, uh, now we'll uh, get to the part of the program that you all came for, uh, the presentation of the awards. And the, the first uh, person up is uh, Melinda Hoblitz, who's the uh, chair of the uh, scholarship committee. Melinda. So I, whoop, let's see if we can get this down a little bit. Uh, Michaela, could you come up, please? Michaela and Jorian. <laughs> yeah. So, Michaela's back for a second time. We're so happy to see her again. Uh, she had a successful but also challenging year at Endicott College, 
While staying focused on her studies and participating in clubs and community service, she turned a difficult social situation into an opportunity to find new friends, and she continues to support her friends and fellow students with compassion. As a committee, we were so impressed at how much Michaela has grown and matured, and we're intrigued with her wonderful ideas about how she wants to combine her love for animals with her teaching career in order to help students succeed. She's determined, courageous, and ready to advocate for herself. Congratulations, Michaela, for receiving a John C. and Eunice B. Morrison scholarship. We wish you a wonderful summer and successful coming year. So the next two people I have were unable to come tonight, so I'm going to present so that they can see this uh, on LCTV. Uh, Emmy Richards, congratulations to Emmy for receiving a John C. and Eunice B. Morrison scholarship. Uh, she can't be here today because she's still in Europe where she is studying in Brussels. We were, however, able to catch up with her during the interview process via Zoom. She's had a successful year at American University, both academically and socially, maintaining a 4.0 average. While the transition to college has meant being separ separated from her family, she ha has worked hard to create community. In fact, she has focused on intentionality in her communications and has learned more about her leadership style, allowing her to support her fellow students and others in her community. Congratulations, Emmy. <laughs> and Abby Lelieve. Abigail Lelieve is a powerhouse student at Maritime, Massachusetts, Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Unfortunately, she can't be with us here this evening because she's doing training with the Coast Guard. In fact, she'll be spending 14 weeks in York, Yorktown, Virginia, um, over the summer doing additional training. This is after a year in which she did basic training, was in charge of 50 freshman students, and was a captain of her soccer team, while also working hard to meet all her academic responsibilities. During a Zoom interview, she talked about how she focuses on time management to help get everything done and recover when things don't go well as well as summarizing how much she learned in basic training through working with all kinds of different people. We are so happy to once again award M. Abby a scholarship and wish her continued success. Thank you. Next up. All right, uh, Declan Reedy, can you come up please? Well, Declan, we're glad you were able to make it here tonight because we know you've been very busy. In addition to maintaining a GPA of 4.96, he is an instructor in Brown Belt in Kung Fu. Uh, Declan works at Obushan, where he's a sales associate, uh, freight supervisor, and manages our social media accounts. Declan has almost 400 hours of volunteering here at the library as well as with Extra Life. He's a president of the Littleton uh, Honor Society and head of their library committee, co-vice president of the Latin Club, and he also has an artistic side as a singer and an actor. He was in several of the school's plays, uh, snagging some of the leading roles such as Prince Charming in Cinderella and Billy Flynn in Chicago. Uh, when we met with Declan, he really impressed us with his commitment to the Littleton community and we know he's going to continue to impress us with his um, progress as he heads off to UMass Lowell in the fall, where he's going to major in history in a pre-law track. So congratulations, Declan. Uh, Madeline Shea. So you might recognize Madeline if you visited Taka or Kimball Snack Shack, where she works. What you might not know, though, is she also held an internship at the Upper Middlesex Commission on the Status of Women. She helped create uh, connections with organizations that serve women and girls, including various nonprofits, empowerment programs, and shelters. 
Um, she also manages their social media accounts uh, to create awareness of the organization's activities. Madeline is a member of the first robotics competition team, Storm Gears. She taught underprivileged boys and girls in Lawrence to help increase their awareness and interest in STEM. She helped the Girl Scouts earn their robotics badge. And she's also played significant roles on the electrical team, uh, which she led for a year. Madeline is headed off to Purdue University in the fall to study biomedical engineering. So good luck in Indiana. And the Boilermakers are very lucky to have you. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew Lelieve. So Andrew attended Neshoba Valley Technical High School for Advanced Manufacturing, where he learned to operate lathes, CNC machines, and other various uh, manufacturing equipment. He even worked for a local machine shop after school and ultimately took a co-op position at a second machine shop. Andrew told us how at Neshoba Tech, he was able to learn about many different careers and particularly noted the precision required that advanced manufacturing taught him. And it taught him how to take his time making careful, well thought out decisions. So one of these decisions was to study marine engineering and attend Mass Maritime Academy like his sister Abigail. Um, he, he impressed us with uh, one of the comments that we noted was, um, he's really excited to test his personal limits um, as a cadet with the annual shipboard training and the Coast Guard training, while continuing to hone his hands-on practical engineering skills. So, Andrew, it's a pleasure to present you with a scholarship, and we wish you all the best. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you must be pretty used to standing up here talk, having people talk about you. Um, so I do want to tell you a few different things about what you're involved with, um, which is why he's obviously standing here today. But we do only, do only get a few minutes, so getting a high-level overview. Um, Ar was just finished his last year at Littleton, class of 2023's valedictorian. And he will be taking off to Georgia Tech later this year to major in computer science. His goal is obviously, while he's out there, to become a cybersecurity analyst in the future. Uh, this outgoing gentleman has been the class president since ninth grade and has maintained a very impressive G th GPA throughout his time. Um, his work with the student government and the class of 2023 over the years has helped raise over $7,000 through different fundraisers and events, um, which is apparently the most in school history. I don't think we have um, proof of what we did in 97, but I'm going to have to assume that's <laughs> probably a whole hell of a lot more than what we did back then. Um, so congratulations there to the whole class. Um, so in addition, all the time he spends with his academics and his school-related activities, also an active role in soccer and the indoor and outdoor track teams for the school. Um, outside of school, he can be seen working as a counselor at our Camp T during the summers. Also refereeing and officiating for the Littleton Youth Soccer. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with youth soccer, it's one of the biggest sports in town. We, of course, have spring and fall soccer because we can't just have one season, so he's there for both. Um, about three weeks ago or so, you would have seen him chauffeuring some of the younger players to Alumni Field to make sure they could actually make it to the game as well. Um, so with all these different activities, I, honestly, I've, I said this before in the interview, I don't know when you sleep. Um, every minute that you are awake is in this town. You are in school here, you are volunteering here, you work here. Uh, what you've done in this town has not gone unnoticed. It, it really, truly hasn't. Uh, as a town, we are lucky to have you. One of the things I remember you had said is that um, you wanted to make sure you had a goal of impacting the people around you. And I gotta be honest with you, you've absolutely done that. You've well accomplished that goal. So. I hope you get to enjoy lots of the games at Georgia Tech. I know it's a big thing for you. And on behalf of the selection committee, I'm honored presenting you with this award, scholarship, and we look forward to seeing you again in the future with an update. Thank you, sir. Take care. Hey. You're also very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Where's Ann? I know Ann. I saw Ann. Okay. All right.
right, where is Ann Lee? Not used to this big microphone. So I do wanna mention all the individuals we're talking about tonight are amazing examples of people who are gonna make huge impacts on the world as well as their community. And Anne is absolutely one of those people. Uh, we're very glad to see you up here once again, even though this is my first time, but we as a community are happy to see you again. So Anne is currently attending Tufts, uh, where she majors in economics, chosen a wide variety of different courses to learn about, to learn about more about how the minority and immigrant groups are interacting within the economies of the US and how those are gonna affect their home country. Uh, she's gonna be able to take what she's learned to really help alleviate real life problems such as international economic relations, income inequality, as well as education. Uh, when you think about that statement alone, that really is gonna give you a really good idea of how impactful Anne is really gonna become. So in addition to her academics, she's also balancing her time very well with volunteer activities as well as employment. She's currently working at the Tisch Library at Tufts, and she's also involved in a pre-orientation program for incoming freshmen. Um, now we all have heard about pre-orientation programs. This one is actually specific for students who have a strong focus on community service, which is really nice. She's also part of the Racial Justice Advocacy Group, who volunteer their time in the Medford area. Um, I believe there are soup kitchens as well as the library as we're at. So, however, her largest commitment outside of academics is Jumbo Code. So this is a student organization that partners with different nonprofit organizations to help create web and mobile applications for their needs. So Anne's team is currently working with an organization called Potencia. Pronounce that properly? Yeah, cool. Um, this organization offers English tutoring services to adult immigrants and refugees to help them with their goals. So again, we're talking about the impact that Anne's making. So down the road, she does plan to attend law school and to focus on immigration law and then to work with organizations such as the National Consumer Law Center. She wants to help immigrants become better adjusted to their new lives uh, by representing them on issues regarding their immigration status, their documents, uh, help give legal advice, or whatever they may need be. So when you speak with Anne, you can see that she clearly does have very good long-term goals for herself and she's setting herself up for that future success. You're an incredible person and you should be absolutely proud of everything that you've accomplished so far. And on behalf of our selection committee, I am very honored presenting you again with a scholarship, and we look forward to seeing you again next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Jenna Kivlin. Ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I may not be able to stand still, but I'm ready. All right. So. I know just by standing here and having me talk about you is not high on your list, so I'll try to do my best not to embarrass you too much. Um, but she's another one of our 2023 Littleton graduates. Um, she's part of the National Honor Society, and she'll be going to Simmons University to take part in their exercise science department of physical therapy program, which is gonna help prepare her to become a physical therapist. This program is going to allow her to take part in a full-time clinical internship, as well as take advantage of the accelerated degree program. So spending her time both working and volunteering since she was 15. Jenna has always been putting herself out there to do more. She's been volunteering her time as well as working at the Pegasus House. If you're not familiar with the Pegasus House, it's a house out in Lawrence. Uh, it's designed for young women who are struggling with mental health and addiction. Realizing the benefits and needs of being financially independent, Jenna has spent her summers working two jobs while still volunteering. Uh, her junior year, she received her CrossFit certification and has been coaching ever since. Um, if I remember correctly, when you actually first got certified, they immediately threw you at the 5.30 class. For those of you who are average gym goers, the 5.30 class in the morning is the most packed class, and they immediately threw Jenna right into it to start coaching. So that's got to tell you something right there. Uh, certainly nothing ever really slows down you or your determination. Uh, years ago, when you had a back injury, which really started screwing everything up for you, you worked with your physical therapist. Uh, you're able to get your confidence back, both mentally as well as physically, and then gaining that back for you really became one of those motivators we felt for why you wanted to go into physical therapy as well as why you're still coaching. Um, always pushing yourself, you know, obviously 10 years ago, Jenna decided it'd be fun to take up tackle football. Um, as you know, football is a male-dominated sport, um, but you can be rest assured, uh, when you attended a Littleton game, you would have seen Jenna out there as our left guard knocking guys on their asses, <laughs> and it was awesome. 
persevering in the face of adversity. I think I had to do a high school paper and I had to choose somebody on that. But that's a fantastic way of describing Jenna. Uh, she's incredibly resilient. She's very humble. You'll never have her tell you any of the things she's done. Uh, you really have to like, pull it out of her. And she's had to handle more adult situations than most people are going to have to deal with their entire lives. Um, and she keeps coming out on top. So you are a role model to all the people out there who have been told they can't do it. Um, on behalf of the selection committee, very proud of you, and we're very honored to be presenting you with this scholarship. Uh, the first selection, uh, sorry, scholarship winner that I get to talk about is not here, Kayla Palmer. Uh, Kayla is in what the is in the category of what we, the selection committee, refer to as an adult learner uh, at 24. I'm sure that would sound terrible to her. Um, she's a 2017 graduate of Littleton High School and a 2021 graduate of Franklin Pierce University with a degree in elementary education and a minor in mathematics. Kayla will use this scholarship to help pay for her master's degree in education from Merrimack College, a two-year program that she plans on finishing seven months early so that she can start applying what she learned in her second full-time year of teaching. Kayla knows where she's from and where she is going, right here, Littleton, Mass, USA. As Kayla expressed in her application essay, Littleton is my home. I'm not only working in a school district, I'm teaching and helping to contribute to my community where I was born and raised. Teaching in my hometown, impacting LPS students alongside colleagues who taught me is one of my greatest accomplishments. Now, truth be told, she wrote this, as I said, as a 24-year-old who's recently engaged. It may be one of her greatest accomplishments to date, but I am certain there are so many more wonderful accomplishments this young woman will have with her family, her students, and the community. Please join me in congratulating Ms. Kayla Palmer on the Kimball Morrison Scholarship. Tanya, Tanya is no stranger to this room. <clears throat> when asked on her Kimball Morrison application which school Tanya currently attends, she didn't say George Washington University. She wrote the George Washington University. <laughs> and one immediately gets the sense that this student is proud of her school. And with that pride comes involvement in her school and community. Tanya is entering her junior year at the George Washington University, not to be confused with the lesser known GW University. <laughs> As a member of the American Medical Physiology Club, Tanya is helping to connect students pursuing careers in STEM and medicine. She also works as a facilities student assistant, helping other students, a common theme here with this young woman, and is a volunteer at Miriam's Kitchen in Washington, D.C., a nonprofit fighting homelessness. And if that's not enough, while maintaining a 3.6 GPA, Tanya is a member of George Washington's symphonic band and university's pep band, which allows her to see all of the men's and women's basketball games. And when I asked you which games were more interesting and fun to watch, keep in mind I'm a girls basketball coach, she said, the women's team. <laughs> so I voted for you to win this award. <laughs> it's refreshing to learn that Tanya credits Littleton High School teachers and guidance counselors, particularly Mr. Christie, for preparing her for success in college and beyond it is a safe bet that Tanya will continue to enjoy her success in school and in the field of biochemistry or forensic science. Congratulations, Tanya. <laughs> Mr. 
Miss O'Meara. I feel like I'm calling them down for, they're in trouble. <laughs> Kaylin O'Meara. <clears throat> Hi. Now, in the spirit of full disclosure, I should say that I know a little bit about this kid. She may deny it, but when she was about six years old, you know what I'm going to say? She drew me a picture as we sat in the stands watching a basketball game. I've looked everywhere for that picture. Can't find it, but it's etched in my mind. Little did either one of us know how much time we'd spend together as we got older and the memories we'd create that would also always be etched in our mind. Kaylin is a top academic student in her graduating class with a GPA Oh, in excess of 4.7, a member of the National Honor Society, and is continuing her education at Emerson College with the likes of Norman Lear, Jay Leno, Maria Menounos, Dennis Leary, Stephen Wright, anybody? Stephen Wright, great comedian. And of course, the Fawns, Henry Winkler, roam the campus. Do you know who that is? Henry Wink, the Fawns, okay. Half you guys got that. Outside the classroom, Kaylin is one of the most accomplished athletes in Littleton High School history. She is one of the few female athletes that can claim she helped to lead her soccer and basketball teams to state final four appearances in the same year. A few weeks ago, she was awarded the 2023 Career Female Student Athlete Award, an accomplishment never achieved before by a two-sport athlete. And as a coach, I know how difficult it is for Littleton athletes, particularly, to be named to the Worcester Telegram and Gazette Super Team. Kaylin was named to this year's Soccer Super Team. Oh yeah. She was also named to the TNG's basketball super team. <laughs> Academic and athletic scholarships aside, what's most important to know about Kaylin are two things. The answer, Larry, to her interview question of what characteristics that she possessed that might differentiate her from others, without hesitation, her response, empathy. And the second thing you need to know about Kaylin is her awareness and her commitment to being a role model for young girls in this town. And she is a tremendous role model. Please join me in congratulating Kaylin on a Kimball Morrison Scholarship. Sarah Drinkwater. I'll test your memory on this one. <clears throat> the good egg has been good for as long as she can remember. While the other eggs in her carton are kind of rotten, she always does the right kind and courteous thing. She is a very good egg indeed. And that sums up Sarah in a nutshell. But there's a reason I chose this quote from the children's book, The Good Egg. Do you remember why? Because yeah. the day that Sarah came in to interview with us, she had read this book to the kids at Shaker Lane. Sarah's tenacity and perseverance has brought her, her, her to her last year at Dean College a nationally recognized school and center for dance where she will receive her bachelor's in dance with a minor in psychology. Sarah just doesn't just attend Dean College, she is immersed in it. She is a member of the National Society of Leadership and Success, a Phi Eta Sigma Honor Society, the National Honor Society for Dance Arts and the Golden Key National Honor Society. Getting the picture? 
On top of all of this, Sarah assumed ownership of the ballet studio that had been an integral part of her life for so many years. And she is in the process of revamping the philosophy and the tools of what it means to attend dance school. Sarah is incorporating mental health counseling, special education, and athletic training into her programs. When asked how she might leave her mark on the community, Sarah didn't hesitate. Through church, through sports, through the dance studio, and through family, I will always find a way to give back. And there is no doubt in my mind that this very good egg will do just that. Congratulations, Sarah, on your scholarship. Uh, the first one is uh, Alexandra George, Lexi George. Uh, as a junior, Lexi will be continuing her journey towards her degree in neuroscience. Her summer will be spent working in an internship at the University, <coughs> excuse me, University of Vermont, researching the causes and impacts of neuropathy. Long term, this capable, very personable young woman plans to work towards equitable health care and treatment for all. Uh, please welcome me in congratulating uh, <clears throat> Lexi on her 2023 John and Eunice Morrison Scholarship Award. And the second one also is not here as she, she's in a class this evening. Uh, it's uh, Katie Hohenschel. Katie is enrolled as, <clears throat> as a professional elementary education program at Bred Bridgewater State University. She has already passed two of the five MTL requirements to become a licensed teacher in Massachusetts. She finds time in her busy schedule to work, to be on the executive board of her sorority and participate in many community service projects in the Bridgewater as well as Littleton area. Uh, Casey is especially looking forward to leading her troop of bobcats at Camp T this summer. And if you see her leading her uh, flock around, please congratulate her on receiving uh, Kimball Morrison Scholarship Award. And last, but certainly not least, Paige. How you doing, Mark? Hi, I'm Hi. busy. You're okay. Yeah, okay. I'm good. Good, good. You sure? Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, uh, Paige is <clears throat> a self-proclaimed outdoor person. Whether skiing or trekking through the woods, Paige is happiest when she's not constrained by the four walls around her. These traits will serve her well in her targeted career in civil engineering. At UNH, she has <clears throat> taken on leadership roles on the local executive board of the American Society of Civil Engineers in numerous com community service projects in the Durham area. Her long-term goals include building sustainable structures and urban planning. Please welcome me in uh, congratulating Paige on the 2023 John and Eunice Morrison Scholarship. Okay, this concludes the formal portion of our uh, program this evening. Uh, Thank you very much for coming.